Momcraft a 42 cheered X300. Well, hello there. And <laughs> one second, one second. Let me let me get this. It is totally gone. I will be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. We are back. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Things are going well today. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome. This is uh this is a professional stream. This is a full-on professional production. This is welcome to the professional production featuring Scar. Hello everybody, welcome. Hope you're all doing absolutely wonderful. Let's hope the rest of the stream goes better than what just happened. Welcome everybody. Good to have you, good to have you. Christmas, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hope schooling's going well. Uh, let's see, uh, Big Fan Flavor, thank you for the 11 months, very much appreciated. Kezabot, Kezabot, I think, I think I, I pronounced your name well. Uh, thank you for the 12 month resubscription. Why do my headphones not want to stay on? Stellar, thank you for the four months, very much appreciated. Dana Artemis, thank you for the seven months, very much appreciated. Frozen Jokes, thank you for the 10 months, very much appreciated. Super sick, happy to have the stream to watch. Well, first of all, I hope I very, very, very much hope that uh, you get a speedy, speedy recovery going and uh, the stream kind of gives a little entertainment for a little bit. Um, let's see, Loki, thank you for the five. Give to subscriptions, very much appreciated. Very, very much. Um, let me zoom, 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 zoom. Amazon, thank you for the prime. Careplays FF, thank you for the one month resubscription. Death itself, thank you so much for the five month resubscription. Very much appreciated. Blue 35, thank you for the 39 month resubscription. Let's go. This is why we love you. See you in Vegas for TwitchCon. Oh, dude, we're going to talk about Vegas. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Um, now, somebody sent a message. Where is it? Oh, wait, there it is, there it is, there it is. Ain't nobody, there you are, couldn't find your message. Um, yeah. Blasted headphones just won't stay on my head anymore. I think they're finally wearing out. Um, anyway, thank you so much for the bits, very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, cannot wait for TwitchCon uh, Vegas. Um, yeah, very excited, it'll, it'll be a really fun event. Um, let's see, Vaughn, thank you for the one month resubscription. very much appreciated, and Jojo, thank you for the 17 months. Very much appreciated. Very, very much. Uh, working my way down the list. Sorry, Gold coming in at 13 month resubscription. The Winter Woman at four month resubscription. Thank you all very, very much. Dada Danny, thank you for the 13 months. Very much appreciated. Wild band. Alex, thank you for the two months. And a wild Christmas coming in at 78 month resubscription. And the Diamond Miner Mom coming in with five gifts of subscriptions. Very much appreciated. Very, very, very much. And of course, Loki coming in at 19 month resubscription on top. Very, very much appreciated. And a wild rascal enters the chat. Hello, everybody. Ow. Mm. We will, <clears throat> gotta be careful with my voice. It's been a little on the fritz again. <laughs> it's been a little bit on the fritz again. I, um, I got the panel on Monday, so I gotta, I gotta make sure my voice is good. <laughs> So I think, yeah, it's Monday. Yes. Yes. Okay. So on Monday, on Monday at PAX, 
I'm doing a panel with Child's Play, Gamers Outreach, and Seattle Children's talking about the Hermitcraft charity event and all that stuff. So super, super excited um, about that. We'll be able to talk about everything we did for the charity stream last year. And if anybody's there, if anybody's there at PAX, definitely come on down. I think it's... Uh, definitely Attention. come on down One to and all the Scarland Oriole has Theater. Now I think concluded. Its I think it's the Oriole Theater. Day. We and that's um and that's where we're gonna do the uh, the panel. Will it be streamed? I believe it will, but I don't have the details yet. I'm hoping to get those today, um, so I can share those for people who you know want to watch at home and everything. Um, so yeah, very excited. Uh, this will be my first like panel or anything like that since 2019. Um, and the first time I've traveled outside like the 20 mile radius of my house in 2019. So um, I am both terrified and excited. <laughs> I'm both terrified and excited. It'll be a short trip um, just up and back. Um, but then the bigger trip of course is for ChurchCon. And I haven't made like a big announcement about it in a video or on Twitter or uh, anything along those lines. But um, yep, I am going to ChurchCon. So if any of you are heading out to the wild worlds of ChurchCon, I will be there. Looking forward to seeing you all. Um, I am thinking about setting, well, I am going to, I haven't done it yet, but I am going to get all the hermits together like in one Discord and uh, plan a hermit meetup in Vegas. So, um, and we'll probably try to do it outside of the convention center. So not if you're, if, you know, you live in the area, you're not interested in going to TwitchCon, you can still, you know, hang out and everything. So uh, it's not a, um, you know, you don't need a ticket to go in. Um, so yeah, very excited about that. So, and Skiz, of course, Skiz, of course, of course, of course. Very excited to see Skiz. I, I you know, I've met Skiz before. I met Skiz. And, um, um, let's see, I met him in 2016 at Minecon. That was the first time I met Skiz. I actually talk about that on the podcast with, uh, Infant Skiz, um, which is really funny, uh, because he tried to save me from a broken wheelchair lift. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, he tried to save me. You know, he was ready. He was ready. He was ready. Uh, let's see. What side? Crypt thank you for the bleh. West side, thank you so much for the five gift subscriptions. Very much appreciated. Um, TV Junkie, thank you for the 17 month. And the Crazy Peanut, thank you for the 12 months. Very much appreciated. Very, very much. Jelly, I, I cannot. If I go and get you, the headphones are gonna fall. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all tripped up. You can deal with it. Somebody can let you in at another time. Anyway, how are you guys all doing? <laughs> so yeah, lots of fun things that are uh, coming up. Um, that I'm quite excited about and ain't nobody coming in at 25 gifted subscriptions. Come on now Come on now That's very generous to you and very very much appreciated uh, Pepper bugs. Thank you for the one month very much first. Nope. One month. No 17 months very much appreciated very much. Oh, how'd you get in? Terriglo's cheered X500, you'll do great on Monday, Scar. Sending lots of good vibes Chilly. that your voice will hold up and everything will go smoothly. Tara, thank you so much for the nice message. Did somebody let her in? Because I swear, like, <laughs> I didn't see anybody and all of a sudden she was there. And I, I the first thing that came into my mind was magic. I'll be honest, magic was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> um... Here, thank you so much for the bit, Summer Dodging. We very much appreciate it. Uh, let's see, X, I'm um, 11. Thank you for the 10 months. Very much appreciate it. Um, and then I'm say two, three, one. Thank you for the five gifted subscriptions. Very much appreciated. All right, let's get into the game here. Come on. Come on, Minecraft. I believe in you. I believe in you. Okay, my belief was unfounded. Come on, Minecraft, turn on for me. Come on, you, you can do it. I, I have a feeling you're going to turn on now. Ender cheered X500, oh. ghost cat. Check for you. A little off. <laughs> a little off. <laughs> a little off. Uh, ghost cat, check. <laughs> a letter, good to see you. Thank you so much for the bits. I'm dodging. $5. Jelly is like meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Zach, thank you for the tip. Very much appreciate She is, but she... Hopefully she's going to go settle and fall asleep because she's up to absolutely no good right now wandering around my room. Anyway, guys, welcome. Welcome to Scarland. And I've been busy. And some of you have noticed. I've seen you on Twitter. I, I see things on Twitter. I, I see things. 
I see things. I know you've been keeping an eye on the skins that I keep putting on. There's a reason. There's a reason. Maybe not the most exciting reason for some of you guys, but there's a reason. I've been very, very busy in uh, in Scarland, and we've got some new additions. And additions that I feel like Zombie Cleo would be very proud of me. That's right. Zombie Cleo would be very proud of me. The Q guy skin. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I saw I saw you guys like what Scar up to. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. So yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of um, of armor standing. And I mean, obviously it's nowhere on the level of Cleo. But yeah, I've been trying. I've been trying to at least get, add a few things. Because I worked so hard on... Um, we've got a Regulus in the chat. Um, Asphodel underscore boat cheered x500 got out of the hospital recently and I wanted to say that your videos were a huge mood lifter sending good vibes your way that's a boat thank you so 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 much for the bits very much appreciate my dodge um and so glad to hear that you got out of the hospital that is is such the so, that is such a relief when you get out of the hospital and you're just trying it, also you're very it, let, let me let me guess you, when you get out of the hospital right you're a little discombobulated right you haven't been outside it's it just feels weird like the air moves <laughs> there's not like fluorescent lights it just feels weird but then it all comes back and it's like okay we're out of there we're out of there uh but so glad you're out i hope you're doing well um so yeah, been doing a lot of armor standing, so super excited about that. So our main project today is not only talking about some of the things coming up and Ahsoka. We're going to talk about Ahsoka. Also, I have a Scar rant. It's the biggest Scar rant of all. There will be a Scar rant. Um, we are going to uh, build out the exit turnstiles. And yes, that is Scar doing redstone on stream. <laughs> I am a little nervous. I am a little nervous. There will be uh, redstone involved today. Um, so yeah, we were gonna have to do that. By the way, I don't have a hard hat on. This, make, this doesn't make any sense, Jelly. I need a hard hat. Um, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're going to have turnstiles that um, can only be accessed from one end. So you just walk up to them, they open, and then you go through. I would prefer if you could take the shulk sensors, right? I wish you could just put them in a very specific spot. Like they only work when you walk over like in this radius instead of like a big round radius. So, but I have a, I have a way around how I originally was going to do it. Jono in the chat? Wait a second. Jono's in the chat. Ren's talented and musical brother is in the chat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the song that Jono made for me. Listen to this. When you enter the great, powerful park of Scarlet. Listen to that. Listen to it. Listen to that great song. Channeling the great John Williams. Listen to this. Listen. Wait, hold on. Let me mute the other thing. Composers do this, right? They're always like... Wait, wait, let's turn it up. It's gonna reset, it's gonna reset. Hold on, it's gonna reset. Let's turn it up, let's get, let's get, let's get some powerful songs here. Here we go. It's resetting, here it goes. <laughs> Hearts for Drano, that's right, Hearts for Drano. Oh, I love that beat right there. I love that beat right there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just imitating John Williams. Oh, I love this song. No, no, I love this song. When you come into Scarland, you can hear the song for yourself. Oh, 
Oh, I love it. I love it. Isn't that amazing? Ah. Oh. Hopefully John is still in the chat and got to see that because, yeah, I hope, I hope, we, I hope we got to see that I put this in the, uh, in the park. Um, so that's a good spot to start our quick tour. So let's do a little tour. Let's do a little tour of the park. And then, um, then we get to work and then we start building. We got lots of fun stuff coming up. We got lots of stuff to build. Um, so of course we built the arch here, right? And in this area, it's relatively not changed. Uh, you need a 10 hour loop. I think he still has a, yes, I think there is a, like a literally a 10 hour loop on his channel. I'm almost certain of it. Um, but, uh, we're just going to go right through there. <laughs> I do not have a ticket. So the music plays only in that, that area. So like in the front of Scarland, in the turnstiles, etc. Um, if we move into the park, you see there's no armor stand action. You're like, Scar, you lied to us. You said there was going to be armor stands everywhere and we were going to be super, super excited. Here it is. They're in the Scarland Giphy Shop. That's right. The Scarland Giphy Shop. Look at this, guys. I've been busy. I've been, I've been so busy. Look at this. I'm, I'm very proud of this. Where do we even start is the real question. Um, here we go. I don't even know where to start. We're going to start over here. So over in this section, we've got p -tubs. <laughs> as the cast member ringing up over here. We have impulse and a little scar, very excited and patiently waiting for his very own jelly plushie. Look at that. He's even got the diamond in his hand. Impulse has got the jelly balloon. And I just love this. Like, I'm just so excited, but I'm like patiently like, I'm so excited for the jelly. Um, so yeah, that we got that armor stand. And you know how a lot of like big, especially like old department stores, always had these kind of big like pedestals in the center, like kind of very like 1930s, 20s ish feel. Um, so we have the kind of shirts, we have the jelly hats, we have the jelly plushie. Um, we have the Star Wars inspired like helmets from. Uh, uh, mythical sausage he gave those to me when he was on hermitcraft during the crossover for a secret santa so i think that's really really fun um so we have those over there we got the jelly plushie now this character I, I love this character right here this i did i did this myself very proud um this is a super star wars fan right here they've got the helmet you know like when you take your helmet and you just put it off to the side a little bit Attention, one and all, Scarland has now concluded its normal operating day. We thank you for joining us in this land of adventure, fantasy, and exploration. We hope you enjoyed your day in Scarland and hope to see you again real soon. Remember, Main Street will continue to operate for one additional hour for your shopping and your delicious snacking needs. Good night and... Come on. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So good. So good. So good. Okay. Where were we? Super Star Wars fan. Wait for the music. Wait for the music. We'll, we'll, we'll turn those off because they will get really repetitive. Okay, so right here, boom. I love it. We've got a super scar, a super scar, a super star, nailed it, Star Wars fan. So they've got the helmet, right? They're looking at the baby Yoda ears. Emperor Valdin cheered X500. I can't wait for your Patreon server to relaunch later today. Oh, we got to talk about that. That's another, that's on the agenda. That's on the agenda of discussion. Got to remind me, got to remind me. Um, so yeah, uh, super Star Wars fan here. So they got the Boba Fett helmet up there. I really love what Cleo did with the backpacks themed to different objects in the park. So they've, <laughs> they've got a... Uh, uh, Mando um, backpack. So yeah, I really like that character because it really does give up the vibe. This is like a super fan of Star Wars. Over here, we can buy our jelly headbands. So looking good. This B-dubs is super bored. 
nobody's come over there to buy and i finished these at like one in the morning last night so these are like a couple they're really excited about the dragon coaster they've got a hat they got the dragon egg they're going to get it ringed up so it's just you know they went and bought those things um i was gonna work on like a kid reaching up and grabbing a hot guy poster like reaching up um i'm gonna probably add that one later um, we do have like the creeper suits up here. We have um, clothing. And of course, on this side, we do sell jelly plushies. Feels weird that I killed jelly for a jelly plushie. It just feels weird. It feels odd, I'll be honest with you. Not sure I like that. Not sure I like that anyway we got dragon eggs for sale maybe that's a hint at something coming in the future maybe 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 anyway let's continue on um so yeah i am i'm so excited we we have an interior we have an interior <laughs> oh and then we have some directional signs um, castle park hub park exit thank you for shopping um of course at the one and only scarlet giffy shop the giffy -gi 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 shop um, so what else have I been working on? I've been working on a lot. I've been working on a lot. Hence, this hasn't been a video because I've been working on armor stands that have taken a lot longer than I thought they would. Um, anyway, over here, I'm quite excited about, but I want to open it. I want to go in through this door. Okay. I need a name for the shop, by the way. Doesn't have a name, needs a name. Elithe Free Guy 88 cheered Dex 500. Love you, Scar. Thank you for being a true inspiration in life and in Minecraft. Scarland looks amazing and I love your attention to detail. Oh, right, thank you so much for the bits. Very much appreciated. I'm a dozen. Very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, thank you for the very nice message. I, I thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I added, a, I did do armor trim. You know, I'm not a huge fan of armor trim, but I, I've been, I've been trying to get into it. I'm trying to appreciate it. I'm trying to understand it. Um, I do really like armor trim on my brain just totally farted on well my brain is resetting did you notice there's almost a smile and eyes on this one <laughs> almost you, you can kind of see it there a little bit yeah my brain went full milk sock anyway on the leather on the leather like tunics and stuff like that it does look really cool um, and remind me, I have something to say about uh, signs. Anyway, let's head inside. So in here, we have actual hanging clothes. Finally, this is supposed to be a clothing store. And I think it's starting to give off the vibe of an actual clothing store. Apparently, we don't sell pants. We just sell shirts. <laughs> we need some pants in here. Um, anyway, we've got some really... I, I like this one. I think this one came out pretty cool. Um, so we have all the different colors in here. So I think it looks really fun. Um, actually this one might be my favorite. I really like that one. This is a cool one too. This is a cool one. Um, we do need to give these back to falls. I borrowed them from our shop. I do need to give them back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? If you have any other ideas for this area that we could do with the armor stands, or maybe we try to convince Cleo to do some cool stuff, you know what I mean? Um, let me know. Let me know what what um, what we could do. But yeah, I, th I think this came out really nice. I'm very happy with that. Oh, we do need somebody back here selling, so we need um, a cashier. Um, so we do need that. All right, so we do have that. Ah, oh, now I remember what I was going to talk about. So we have named this building, the red building, my favorite building, the Mossy Cocoa Bean. So this is the Mossy Cocoa Bean, and of course we have coffee, huh? Cocoa, tea, and vibes and books. <laughs> vibes and books anyway so what i was going to say about signs is you know how with armor we can add multiple dyes to it to kind of create different um colors right so it's not just your standard green your standard blue uh, but you can like mix together colors right i think that would be amazing if we could do that with signs i don't know if it's possible or not because of course, if you're making leather, you're in the crafting bench, you're adding the dyes, whereas this, you just click the sign and then you colorize it. But dude, wouldn't it be cool if we could, you know, change the hue and stuff like that to the colors, just like we can with leather um, armor. But but yeah, I think this came out pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we got the Moscow Cocoa Bean in here. I only have one armor stand so far, and that's Gem. 
Um, so we got Gem in here. She's enjoying a drink. She's got jelly ears on. Uh, I actually, I'm gonna probably bring villagers into here to work. So there's like a little bit more movement behind the scenes. Um, I think I've already showed you this sign over here. This one is the Worlds of Color, Gifts of Color. And of course, this is the color shop. And that, of course, is representing my storage system, which is all of the color and building blocks in the game. So that's not all. No, no, no. We've got many, many more things here in Skyland. Ignore this. Don't want to talk about that. Do not want to talk about Anyway, Jellies, Whiskering Whimsy's Toy Shop. Now, we've added stuff here. We've added stuff inside here. Boom. We've got green. Looking at what I wish was a TNT block, but apparently we don't have head TNT blocks in the game right now, even though in prior seasons we did. So I am quite confused on why, why we don't. It, it seems like it would be on the list. But if I can find a TNT block, I'm going to put a TNT block here. And then Mumbo. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Mumbo represents somebody here. I'm not entirely done with this armor stand because I've got ideas. You know those guys at Disney World who go in the shops and are carrying like 20 bags full of like merchandise they try to resell on eBay? That's the vibe unintentionally that Mumbo has over here. <laughs> It's, it just has that vibe. He has that vibe that he's getting all the limited edition merchandise. He's going to resell it on eBay or wherever um, after he gets out of the park. If you're not familiar, like a lot of people do that. You see them like at di photos of them at Disney World just carrying like enormous bags of like merchandise. And, and for whatever reason, Mumbo gave up that vibe. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Um, we got uh, Jimmy over here, of course, the uh, proprietor of the toy shop. And he's got a little scar in his hand there. Um, and then on this side, I haven't finished over here, but of course we have B-dubs behind the cash register. And we've got a cub looking up at this drum, super excited. Look at that. He's so excited. So excited. Still to this day, I get jump scared from that. Um, okay, what other armor stands have I worked on? I know I've worked out more. Oh, oh, lots of things, actually. Um, you, you'll notice that there are now campfires in the windows here. I've been working on this all week, and I have no video to show for any of this, by the way. So that's why we're streaming. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys. I've got no big build. I've got no cool redstone. I've got no fun interactions. I literally just have this. This is all I have for you. This is all I have. Um... But we do have the campfires up in the lamps. And with dynamic lighting, these do shine. These do shine. So I think that's really cool. Uh, Boba Fett's up in the window. I put this painting up there just to kind of give some impression of activity behind the windows. So they're not just all blank. Like over here, we've got a painting in this one. And, you know, there's just little things in the windows just to draw your attention to it. Um, so it's not just boring and, you know, just a flat old window. Uh, let's see. Two diary. Thank you for the brand new or one month resubscription. Very much appreciated. And Storm Garden. Thank you for the 15 months. Very much appreciated. And Kathy Howdy. Thank you for the 37 month resubscription. Scarlet looks amazing. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, and then we've got Mando kind of creeping up in the window up there, looking down, looking for his bounty. Absolutely love that. Um, so yeah, lots of little things in the windows. Of course, we have our screaming goats up in that um, pergola peak whatever it is there's so many little things in the windows i'm just trying to like find some of them <laughs> but anyway let's head down skyline because there's more stuff down this way this might be my favorite armor stand i made i did post this one on twitter and this is cub so at disneyland there is a porch and that used to be um back in the day that that building that has a porch and some rocking chairs that you can sit on and watch people walk up and down main street was actually um like an underwear shop back in the day and the idea was that like this is like in the 50s like the guys would wait on the porch um for their wives to go and buy underwear <laughs> and they would sit and rock on the rocking chairs nowadays like all the shops obviously have been like morphed together and there's not an underwear shop but that was back in like the 50s and stuff like that so that's the reason actually why if you walk down the down Main Street, you see a shop that has rocking chairs in a porch. 
that's what it was designed for. The women go in, they get their, their underwear, they come out, the men are rocking on the rocking chair waiting for them. So um, fun little old Disney trivia, because back in the day, Disneyland's Main Street was actually full of crazy stuff. Like they sold pianos, they sold all sorts of stuff that, you know, you don't really see in today, in, like today in Main Street. Anyway, that's a little fun trivia for you. Cub here. Look at Cub. He's sitting in the chair. He's waving. He's got uh, popcorn. He's got baby Yoda ears. He has his uh, jelly balloons. Just chilling, living his best life here in Scarland. Looking out. Like, come on. This is like an amazing. So sad. This is an, like an amazing view to watch people walk up and down the park. And soon there's going to be an enormous volcano right there. Oh, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Disneyland was opened in the 50s. Disney World opened in the 70s, so this took place in the, um, in the uh, 50s. Um, let's see, let me check them in the chat here. Cleo would be proud? Oh, thank you, thank you. Very happy about that. I actually gotta take off my boots. We're going, where we're going, I don't want to kill it. Because I did capture one of the jockeys. Look at him. He's a stormtrooper. He's a stormtrooper. And look at his name. Hold on. We're dodging. We're weaving. We're weaving. Look at this. These are not the droids we're looking for. <laughs> no! But the problem is I have thorns on my on my boots. So I had to take them off. Uh, let's see. These are not the droids we're looking for. <laughs> oh, I love that guy. Hey, by the way, our, our sniffer grew up and got trapped back here. I have no idea what to do with it. I won a copper golem, a tough golem. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy I finally captured one of those. I've been trying for a very long time to capture a jockey in the uh, the ground there. I just hope nobody kills him. I just hope nobody kills him. Just leave him be. He's, he's a friend. He's just misunderstood. He's just a very misunderstood creature. There we go. Okay, sweet. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah, oh, man, I've been working on these things for a long time. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited. Oh, and I fixed these. Um, these got a little bit bumped uh, when the cleaning lady was clearing out all of the dragon eggs. So they got kind of like askew. So I think I got them back to somewhat how Cleo had them. Obviously not perfect uh, because she had them like just stellar and mine's kind of like off in a few spots. Um, but I did my best. I did my best. I did my best. All right, we're going in to an area that uh, means a lot to me, okay? So, I, the, the story behind where I got this skin, we can talk about it later because it is a really funny story. Um, but this scene represents my great, 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 wait, great, great, no, great, great, no, great, 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 great. Not my grandma, but my great grandma. So it would be my great grandma. Yes. Okay. So let's let's sit down and have a story time with Scar. So I it's very important in my opinion when you're designing theme parks to make sure that you design a theme park for everybody, or at least as much as you possibly can. So that means that you have big attractions for people who are excited for the thrills and you have lighter, more chill attractions for great grandma, of course, because she loved Disneyland. Absolutely loved, love, 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 love the Disneyland. But she only wanted to sit on a bench and ride the People Mover. And that's, of course, when the People Mover was still in Disneyland. So whenever I think about like theme parks and stuff like that, it's why I'm so angry about Galaxy's Edge when they removed the Banff, the ride that was very similar to a People Mover that would have moved all around the land. It's because you just took out the enjoyment of Star Wars land to a lot of people who can't go on um, Rise of the Resistance, can't go on uh, Smuggler's Run. So it's very important that you have those attractions for, for people who might be disabled, people that don't like big thrills, people who, who might get too, like, ah, oh, like too many, like, crazy stuff going on. But a nice, chill Bantha ride? Right up their alley, right? Right up their alley. Would have been amazing. And it's also a great way to add more energy and vibes to a, to an environment. Think of like Rivers of America. We have the Mark Twain and you have the sailing ship Columbia. Could you imagine in Star Wars land if the Bantha just walked by you? Come on now. That would be amazing. Anyway, so that's what this armor stand represents is my great grandma and just chilling. 
<laughs> it's not the best. It's not the best, uh, like, face. She was very, like... Very, very nice. So this, this, I don't know if that face really represents her very well, but it's all I had. Um, but so, so what I thought about to jazz this up even more, any more would be that you know here's me really wanting to go on rides. Grandma's totally, totally, totally happy here with her with, with her jelly plush, her popcorn, just watching the trolley go by, and then there's me like, oh man, I. I just really want to go on Space Mountain. Like the thought of that roller coaster ride now is so appealing. Oh, I want to go on Indiana Jones. I want to smell that musty smell in the caves. So yeah, it's just like a kid longing, looking off at the park of all the rides. Well, great grandma sits and enjoys life, watching the trolley go by, enjoying one piece of popcorn at a time. So um, so yeah, that's that's the story behind that armor stand. Uh, I, I I think it came out pretty cool. By the way, great grandma. And uh, the little kid here, um, they both got matching shoes for Disneyland. They both needed new shoes before they entered the park. Needed new shoes. And I think this very well might be the last armor stand that I did. Yes. <laughs> this is another armor stand that I don't know if anybody will remember this one. This is Grandpa Scar. And are, you, are is anyone familiar on how I became so old? No, not the wizard. No, common. No, that's a good guess. That is a good guess. But no. Old Scar. What could Scar have been doing? He got so old. Captain, you nailed it. Sahara, wait in Apple. You got it too. Let's go. Yes, this is me waiting for Sahara back in season six. So if you're not familiar, back in season six, Iskol, Mumbo, and Grian um, opened a shop called Sahara. And it was, it was never open. And then or it, it took forever to open. And then when it did, if you bought something, you waited like, it felt like 10 minutes for the item to get like delivered to you from the redstone. And I had this joke that I just kept getting older and older and older and I started like growing out a beard. So what I wanted to do basically with the armor stands was I didn't have any like older people in the park. So I wanted to add them, um, add some older people to the park, enjoying their time, like on the benches and stuff. So yeah, old Scar here. It's got uh, his jelly plush, his slurpy jelly ears, just enjoying the ambiance of the area, the castle and everything in this area. So, um, so yeah, that, that is, I think all of the armor stands I've added, I feel I feel like that's not a lot, but it also took me a really long time to make all of those. <laughs> do I have a lot to show for all of my time? <laughs> I don't know if I do. Gaming underscore tip four dollars oh, and no. fifty cents. You are such an inspiration. Less than three, and even though that Twitch will read this message out loud, I still would like it if you would try to pronounce my name. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. You're such an inspiration. Where, where, where do you want me to pronounce? Uh, let's see, I want you to pronounce your... your oh, okay, I'm going to pronounce your name. It's a... Shredizen? 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 Shredizen Gaming? I think. Thank you so much for the tip. Very much appreciate it. Play four. Thank you for the six months. Very much appreciated. Uh, sorry, one 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 three. Thank you for the three months. Very much appreciated. Ruffle Max. Thank you for the eleven month resubscription. Very much appreciated. I did my best. People come from far and wide to hear me mispronounce their name. It's a service I provide. It's a great service. It's an important service. I did my best. So that's what I've been up to um, in terms of armor stands and things along those lines. So. Yeah, like I said, I, I figured I'd have more to show you. Oh, have I showed you this? I did the other side. So now we have uh, popcorn bouncing on both ends of the popcorn shop. So yeah, I think that came out pretty cool. I think that came out nice. I think that came out nice. So yeah, hopefully we'll get some more in here. Um, I got more plans. It's just, it really takes time. 
Like, I don't know how Cleo just whips together like the wild things so quickly. It's it's freaking crazy. Um, okay, what was I gonna do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been, I've been also killing myself a lot and I've got um, quite a few more heads. So we've got another cute guy. We've got some of the new Minecraft default ones. I think we have a Steve. Yeah, that's a Steve and an Alex. Got a Mumbo, we got a Kralis. I'm not sure what we do with the Kralis one yet. Oh, oh, we got a beef one. Um, I gotta show you something else. I gotta show you something else that I did. And I don't know what to do with it. So help me figure out what I should do with this. Okay, here he is. What should I do with this guy? I think I may have showed you guys this before, but I still don't know what to do with it. it Oh, FX. Oh, it's like, what the heck? Um, so I don't know. Like, I think I named it the Scarland Security, but it almost feels like the AI bot of um of Scarland potentially. So yeah, let me know what I should do with it because it is a cured or like a pacified uh pillager. So it, it's a cool mob and it doesn't have its crossbow, it's got the MCC head on it. So yeah, if you have any ideas for that guy, let me know. I do kind of feel like it is the equivalent of like, like the, a chat bot of Scarland that helps you on your day, but gives you terrible advice in the end. <laughs> I think that would be, dude, that could be something for Impulse to do, right? Maybe in one of the shops, you go inside and it just gives you terrible advice. Like go to the castle and bang on it with a stick. <laughs> Looking for family fun? Explode a rocket in your... No, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm just trying to think of like really funny, like just horrible advice for the park. <laughs> just needs to be like terrible, terrible advice. I think it could be really funny. Hmm. Yeah, well, let's think. Let's think of some really bad advice for theme park um, going. And then it could either do it via like popping out like a... I'm, I mean, yeah, you could do it as like popping out a ticket or a piece of paper that tells you, you know, what you should do, or it could do like, um, it could do, uh, it could hit a record and play out loud. There could be a, a, quite a few different things. Parkour the castle. You definitely will not get trespassed. <laughs> That's great. Flood the bathrooms. Create a wet and wild experience. Oh, I love that. You guys got some good ones in the chat. I love it. Nap in the end, it's always right. Yeah, so that that uh, that head could one be a chatbot like creature that gives you really bad theme park advice, or it could be Scarland Security. Um, any one of those things, we we have uh, quite a few options. Anyway, touch ducks redstone, zero consequences here at Scarland. Okay, let's go grab some supplies. We got work to do. We've got work to do. Today we've got work, 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 work. I'm trying to think of what I need to do my work. <laughs> trying to think of what I need. Is this what I need? I don't know if that's what I need. I'm conflicted. Ah, that's what I needed. Nailed it. We do need some lights and I don't have any torches. I'm going to take those. <laughs> I'm going to take those. Scar, what are your thoughts on Scrab Scrab Scrabran? On Scarland? I love Scarland. Make friends with a warden. I like that. Make friends with a warden. A warden is your friend. Oh wait, 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 wait. I need. I'm just trying to think in my head right now of like all the different things that I may or may not need. So I'm just, I'm just grabbing random things. <laughs> because what we're going to be doing is building out the turnstiles. So, just thinking of all the different things I may or may, 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 may not need. And I think we'll grab one more stack of that. Sweet, beautiful, wonderful. And grab a stack of that and a maybe a... Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Nice. Let's go grab a shulker box and store all this. Mrs. Yeti is here. And Mrs. Yeti is here for a good time. Mrs. Yeti, you missed all my armor stance. Hold on. Mrs. Yeti, look at this. Look at my theme park armor stance I've made. Look, 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 I did this all myself. I'm very proud of myself. Look, it's my great grandma 
there's me on the bench just wishing to go on rides while great grandma just enjoys watching the trolley go by enjoying one popcorn at a time and boom they got a jelly plush have you seen all the armor stands with cd like look at this one look at this one it's got a little kid in a wheelchair here looking super sweet All right, let's get to busy. So let's get the quick shulker box down. So what we're going to be doing, like I said, we're going to be building the turnstiles to get us outside of the park. Hold on, hold on. There's more stuff I need. There's more stuff I need. One thing I've liked using lately is... Let's see if I can find any of them. Ah, there they are, there they are, there they are, there they are, there they are. I despise the fact that these don't stack e stack on each other. <laughs> it is so annoying and so painful, but that is fine because that's the way Mojang designed it. And we'll just be happy with it. <laughs> oh, they are great. I, I love that they don't stack on each other. Just, just all around, just fantastic stuff. Just fantastic stuff, guys. Great stuff. Some may, some may some may even say important stuff. Cub had the best idea. Have you heard Cub's idea for those pots? It is the best idea. Um, they need to listen to Cub more. That's that should be a, that should be a rule. That should be a rule. So, oh, what is Cub's idea? Cub's idea is that you can explode a pot with a bow how cool would that be like seriously how cool would that be you create like a really fun target practice area that you shoot with your bow and the, the pot shatters oh that'd be freaking amazing that would be amazing okay what else do i need what else do i need what else do i need for this design i've got ideas i've got ideas i've got them in my head I think we're done. I think we've got what we needed. Fill it with gunpowder and it explodes. <laughs> it could be like a massive bomb. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. But yeah, it's like such a simple but really fun idea just to have the pot shatter with a bow. Like, that's really cool. A uh, calibrated skulk sensors would allow you to specify a block action to make the turn style move. Man, I still don't understand the calibrated sensors. <laughs> like, it, it re it's really confusing. Like, I still don't understand. Like, I try to understand. I do my best. I put in the time. <laughs> but I don't know. For the next life series, I really want to learn them. I really, really want to learn how to make them actually work. Because they would be super powerful in that series. My gosh, would they be powerful. I, I don't. Like, they're, they're, they're very confusing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to make them work. I'll, I, I wish. Okay. So, what I'm thinking about here is I did a little mock-up in a test world. Just trying to figure out, like, what this would look like. Because the problem was, and I do this often, is I design things without thinking about the functionality of them. A lot like an Apple product. So that's kind of where I've been stuck a little bit. So I went back in a creative world and kind of thought about like where this is going to go. So I think what we're going to start with is we're going to remove this section here. We'll probably add this little star back because I, I quite like it, actually. Um, so I, I, I quite like that. So so the idea here is that when you walk through the exit, the turn styles go down. And then when you walk back, they pop back up, obviously. So you obviously can't come back through this area. So it's like a one way. It's a one way. It's a one way area. OK, so let's get to busy. Just for like weird visual things in my brain, I'm actually just going to fill this in. <laughs> It's easier on my brain to have that filled in. So my idea is that we could do something. Okay. I'm going to do something, say, like this. My voice cracked, guys. 
I don't know what happened, guys. All right, so I think something like that. So obviously this is temporary, but I think the, the wall will start coming out at this point. What do you think? Does that look okay? I think that'll be all right. So then in the center here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out three blocks like that. So this is what my idea was, that we put down these guys, okay? And this is what I tested in the test world, and I'm very unsure if this is going to actually work. <laughs> I'm not going to say if it worked or not in the test world, because... Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, so this all when you walk over this, the turnstiles will come down. We'll obviously do a little redstone underneath to make it this work, but it should work, hopefully. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is going to work out. So in theory, we could do something like this. So that would be kind of like the wall, and then there's the redstone. So it's like a, a sketch of what it could be. Uh, let's say I am they thank you for the 17 month very much appreciated very much. Thank you for the resubscription uh, Don't you have impulse to do it? Um, this is such simple redstone like I have I have bigger things for for impulse to do Do I speak other languages? Unfortunately not. I wish I did Maybe I should learn but I can barely speak my own language <laughs> uh, I can barely speak English uh, do I need stick? Oh, I need stickies. Okay, hold on. Let's go grab some sticky pistons. Now the question comes. The rant. The rant of all rants. The scar rant. Prepare yourself, my friends. A scar rant is upon us. Oh, I keep forgetting I moved my slime to the other building. The, 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 the scar rant is coming. Preparing. It is brewing deep inside. So on um on the platform formerly known as Twitter, uh, I ranted about my oxygen concentrator. So I have travel coming up, and I fired up my portable oxygen concentrator uh, for the first time in a little while because I was I haven't been able to to go out with it much. Um, and I wanted to make sure, you know, the batteries were all good and everything like that was all set up. Um, unfortunately, the device was airing out with a yellow light. And we tried to do a little troubleshooting, try to figure it out uh, to no prevail. So I said, all right, let's call the, um, the manufacturer in the, um, in the morning. Because according to them, we've got people on standby. Like... 12 hours a day, ready to help you with a moment's notice. A technical mind like no other, diagnosing any of your oxygen concentrator needs. That's what it was told to me. So we call, and basically what happened was the company discontinued my model shortly after it was manufactured. It really wasn't manufactured all that long. So if you thought about it this way, you have old concentrator design, and you have new concentrator design. And when I got my concentrator, it was the newer model, and the older model was 20% heavier, 20% bigger, less battery life, and couldn't go on the back of the wheelchair because it had like a built-in wheels and stand. It was not portable for me at all. Um, this one could go on the back of the wheelchair. It was a little bit more, but um, after, after literally a year and a half, we got insurance to finally approve it, but I had to pay for it up front. It was every penny that I had. It was every penny like and there was like a hope and a prayer that they were actually going to insurance would then reimburse which they 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 did they did reimburse it in the end um but i had to upfront all the money up front for it it was around six thousand dollars um it was insane and um so we got the concentrator and you know it, it it had issues it had issues from the very beginning but it was always like one thing after another so we never got it like properly like taken care of unfortunately and so what it's doing is most likely producing a lot less oxygen than it could so inside the concentrator most likely there could be a seal kind of worn out or maybe the medium needs to get changed um so that's that's the issue but when you call them they're like oh no we we discontinued the model we we don't service uh, we don't provide parts and we can't troubleshoot anything because the device is discontinued and the device is not old like it's not old at all like when you spend six thousand dollars on something with the you know six thousand with the batteries with the extra batteries the charger the well, the car charger in the bag like so you know it added up and it's like 
you don't provide service on something that expensive and you're just going to like throw it out and you say, oh, no, 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 no. We've got another model. You can totally buy it. Totally good. And then you think, OK, well, maybe they've got a newer model. No, it's the old one. It's the 20, this, the 20% the 20 heavier, the 20% bigger, the less battery life and the one that can't go on the back of the wheelchair. And I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? Um, so what happened was it looked like they discontinued all their models, but two. So because mine's a continuous flow oxygen and concentrator, it's heavier, it's bigger, it's more expensive than say like a sip, um, like a puff, um, concentrator that only does like short puffs. Um, and then, then the question is, okay, where do you, where do you get, where do you buy the concentrator? Because if I have to even buy this old dumb one that that's literally from like 2012, that's, you know, a much less quality than the one that I had. And it's like, okay, where do we get that? Ah, here's, here's the fun part of it all. So insurance companies decided that these oxygen concentrators are way too expensive and these companies are nickel and diming us to no end. So they said, we're going to pay this much money only for concentrators. And so the distributors were like, yeah, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to, we're not going to accept insurance. So in our network of insurance, there is no actual providers of this device. And every one of those providers says, oh, what you do is you buy it from us and then you get it reimbursed from insurance. And so we're like, okay, that's kind of, that's what we had to do last time was we bought it and reimbursed, call insurance. Insurance is like, no, we don't do that anymore. No, 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 we don't do that anymore. There is a chance if you bought the device, you could submit it, but there is no guarantee where there was a guarantee last time that they would pay for it. It was just really convoluted. And it was so infuriating. Like it just, this whole week has been nothing but trouble for like my dad, who's done a ton of, ton of calling these different places, trying to figure out what on earth these clowns are up to. And it's just so infuriating that it, this, you know, this is what this problem, this is, this is the biggest part of the rant. This is the biggest part. A lot of these companies will, will get up on their high horse and preach all about, you know, some kind of thing that they're trying to be virtuous about. Take, for instance, the climate or something like that. They, they make all these platitudes about it, right? But then they're so willing to just discontinue a model and throw away all the all the materials, all the stuff that went into building something and just throw that away. Throw that away in a landfill so we can make some more money. You know, like if you looked at these batteries, right? So this is my phone. There's a lithium battery in here. It's probably about like this big. The lithium batteries that attach to my oxygen concentrator, and sadly, I don't have one. They're this big. They're like this big. So let me, I'm trying to find something to show you, like an equivalent of how big that is. Oh, here, this is a decent, this is a decent, this is the size. So this, it's actually bigger than this, but this is a, so just envision how small the battery is in here. And this bigger than this is entirely filled with lithium. And they're totally cool with that. Just getting thrown away that you just throw that away. No, no problem. Just throw that away and buy our new product. There's four of those. So envision this bigger than this, bigger than this entirely filled with lithium and they just wanted to throw all four of those away and buy a new one and buy four more think about like the impact on the environment on just throwing away all that lithium that got mined up but that's totally fine like that's fine that's fine because that makes us money like we can we can make up a bunch of fake platitudes that mean nothing but when it comes down to the real moment when you actually do have to Look out for the environment. Look out for people. No, 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 no. That's that's when, that's when it's money time. That's when it's money time. We gotta we gotta line the old buckaroos. Gotta line the old pockets. Like, I just think about like the waste, like the absolute waste of that much lithium in those batteries that they're totally cool with throwing away. Like if you if you looked at like like I said before, like a phone, right? You know, we have our phones and there's like a little tiny lithium battery that powers the whole phone. And these ginormous lithium batteries, those batteries are 500. When I bought them, they were, I think they were $450 each. And they're just totally cool. It's just throwing that away. And it just boggles my mind. And if you're familiar with lithium mining in general, it's a not a great thing. <laughs> and they're, uh, they're just willing just to throw that away. 
Just toss that away. No needs. No need for that anymore. No need. We have an older model for you, too. <laughs> so it, it, it was one of those times where you're just so mind blown with how ridiculous systems are these days. You're just like, what is going on? And it's one of those scenarios where you're like, there's no good solution here. I'm most likely going to have to pay for it all out of pocket. I'm going to get a worse device. And I, it's just it, it was just such a stupid thing that you Terrible could easily just 500. help God, us fix. I completely agree with you. It is ridiculous. I left you a message on Twitter. If you want to try a repair, your best bet is talking to Altra service professionals. They work out of Florida, so you'd have to ship it, but they offer free shipping, have good reviews, and have been in business 13 years. Oh, that's a go. I don't think I've tried that one, Tara. I've tried a few other repair places that they say, oh, no, the manufacturer discontinued my, my model. We can't touch it. Um, but I'm going to try that one. I'm going to try that one. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> because that's the other problem is there's been some, some repair places that we've tried. Um, but they've all said, oh, no, that's a discontinued model. We can't touch it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try. I'll try that one um, after the stream. Yeah, it's just, it's just frustrating. Okay. But, yeah, that's the scar rant. Like, I, I just, my mind boggles with how much, I need more dirt. Ah! Uh, my mind just boggles with the idea of just discarding all of that lithium just to buy the same thing for no reason when you could just repair the device with like a simple replace of a seal. It, it could be as simple as like a seal just got kind of like a jar or maybe the seal kind of wore out a little bit. Like it is such a simple repair that would, would just make this device then just work for another couple more years. Anonymous tipped $250, day and best of luck, A. Oh, Anonymous, thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I'm pretty sure I, I know who you are, and I, I read your messages, and I very, very much appreciate them, just so you know. So thank you, and thank you for this tip. It is very much appreciated. Very, 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 very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, that's beyond generous. I can't, <laughs> That's insane. That is insane. Thank you. Uh, put some hearts in the chat uh, for our Anonymous friend. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's my that's my that's my frustration rant Storm for the day. Storm six hundred and forty six tipped one hundred dollars. Start of your oxygen concentrator. Storm, thank you. You definitely don't. You guys don't have to, no. You don't have to. But I, I very much appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Storm. Thank you, anonymous friend. Thank you. Uh, it's very generous for you both. Very much appreciate it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I, the, I guess the thing that makes me the angriest about the whole thing is that, um, is like, I'm lucky to have my parents that help so much. Like my dad's on the phone, you know, getting, he was on the phone an entire day doing everything he could to figure out something. And like, not everybody has that. And especially for older people who, who just, you know, like not, you know, something like older people, you know, I don't mean to say as meanly, but, you know, sometimes older people, you know, aren't always there cognitively. I don't mean that in a bad way, but, you know, like just, you know, that they, they might be confused. That That's a lot of information to like figure out like the calls and they tell you to go over here and then they tell the email this person and this and that. And it's like, that's a lot. That's a lot. And it's like, why do we make why do we make this field that helps people who are not at their best? so freaking difficult and hard for them like why why is that a thing and it's it's been like that if i were to go on my super rant it's been like that since around 2016 2017 where things have just went absolutely downhill and then you know the stress the pandemic put on the health system just made it exponentially worse and it's just like man it needs somebody needs to step up and fix this nonsense do we need sticky pistons by the way i don't remember but we'll, we'll just continue on until then <laughs> We'll, we'll continue on until that. Um, but yeah, it, it's just so infuriating. Nevis 2057 ah. Shared X500. Mm. Are you able to find the equipment you need in another country where it might be cheaper? 
I don't know. I haven't looked outside of United States. Um, yeah, that might be that might be another another avenue. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to look at that because you know I've got TwitchCon. We got Twitch Con, Twitch 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 Con. Um, so I, I've got to get I've got to get this concentrator properly operating before TwitchCon and my um, my grandma and aunt's memorial that's later in the year. So it's like, I got to get it sorted out for those things because I've already got the travel. I got it all sorted out. <laughs> Here's one thing. Okay, let's do one positive, okay? Let's do a positive. It's a weird positive. Some people are going to scratch their head, but it's okay. So in the United States, we have this delightful agency called the TSA. Um, they're, they're, they, they wear these delightful blue outfits. They're extremely competent. And um, when you go through a checkpoint, at an airport, it can be very difficult being in a wheelchair and needing a lot of medical equipment, specifically like medical liquids, and it can get crazy. And I've had some wild experiences at TSA over the years um, and some really great ones. I, I got to point it out. I can't be negative. There was a guy nicknamed uh, Hollywood in, uh, in SeaTac, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. The absolute gem, gem of the world that man was. Um, and I've also met a guy that I thought he was going to punch me or my brother, my brother, he thought he was going to punch my brother. <laughs> but anyway, the TSA actually done something really good. So they have the, they have the TSA cares thing where you can call and you can let them know ahead of time that you'll be coming through a checkpoint with medical things like medical liquid, which can cause red flags going through, et cetera. And they're more aware and they'll have somebody there that like, that's more trained for people with disabilities, people with um, like cultural artifacts or ashes or all sorts of different things that maybe in the past that they may have ruined, destroyed or caused problems with. So they have somebody that's trained and does that. Now, all you have to do is just go online and fill out the form and you don't have to like sit on hold for like two hours anymore. So it's like, oh, there we go. There's a positive in the world. You can just go online and fill out the form. And uh, and then you uh, then it, depending on the airport, that is depending on the airport. Um, they'll have somebody there when you get there um, that will help you through the line that's trained. If you're trying to use TSA Cares at LAX, just don't even, don't even, don't even think that's ever going to be a thing. We were told that. So, like at PDX in Portland, um, Seattle, uh, I'm trying to think of anywhere else. I think uh, definitely not Nashville. That was where we had a disaster. But at LAX, they're like, oh, John Wayne, John Wayne. That was actually another really good airport. That there was a TSA guy there. It was nice. So you got to give you got to give props to the people that are great. You got to give props to the people that are great. And Storm, thank you so 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 much. Um, hey, I found this button. Storm, thank you so much. That's beyond generous. We very much appreciate it. So at John Wayne, there was also another TSA person that was absolutely phenomenally nice. Um, have I told you guys about the Nashville story before? It was after uh, Minecon Live. I don't know if I have. Uh, but anyway, at least you could fill out those forms and it's super easy. And th that's actually something that I can say, hey, there's a, there's a good thing. There's a positive thing. So I was like, you know, that's you got, you got to take a win when you get one. <laughs> Look at me doing redstone, by the way, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make the pistons come back down. <laughs> Hunter Rose, thank you so much for that. Very, very much appreciated. Um, check Impulse's office. I'm saving that for a video. I'm saving that for a video. So in Nashville, it was after Minecon Live. So we filmed the thing and all of that stuff. Um, and it was super early. But my brother and I, I think we got up at, at I think we made an alarm for 355. <laughs> we're like, we're going to sleep as long as we can. And we're going to do 355. Um... We went to bed so late, my brother was like, I don't even need to take a shower. I took a shower at like one. <laughs> um, so so we, we got up really early and we get to the airport and um, the lines were, were pretty long at the TSA. So they, they were they were pretty long. Um, and we, we um, so they, they didn't. They didn't really acknowledge. Love you, Scar. Oh, thank you, thank you. So many announcements. 
so many announcements. Clear custard tipped $150. Hopefully insurance stops being a pain. Roxanne, thank you so much for the bits. And uh, cholesterol, I, I'm going to mispronounce your name. Co 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 uh, why am I, I? I can't call you cholesterol. I almost called you cholesterol. Clear custard. I, I'm so sorry. I mispronounced your name. I'm sorry. It's a service I provide. People come from far and wide to hear me mispronounce the name. Um, thank you so much for that. That's very generous of you and very much appreciated. Um, and I promise not to call you cholesterol again. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so yeah, we, we we go through the line and they, they obviously didn't do like the TSA cares thing. Like they just disregarded it, like LAX and. Um, and we were going through there and the, the guy is, you know, doing like the full like pat down. He's like, can't go through the, the, the whatever. And so he like unbuckles the strap and like I fall forward because this strap holds a good portion of my weight. And, um, and my brother's like, hey, and he like grabs me and, and the guy's like, not, no, just doesn't care. Like, he, like if I fell on the floor, it just would have been a normal day for him. Um, and then, um. And then he's like mad that I, I can't lean forward enough, right? So like I can't lean forward enough, and like I'm causing problems. And then he's he's saying like, well, do we have to take you to like a private area and have you removed from the chair? And this, it was just it was escalating to the point where it was like this is ridiculous. Um, and then um, he was trying to like pull me forward in the chair, and my brother was like, you you gotta stop, like you are going to hurt him or you're going to drop him on the floor, and then you have to have EMS come here. So like, please don't do that. And then, um, and then the guy turns to my brother and it's like, you want to escalate this? Like looked at my brother, like dead in the eye. And it was like, oh my God, like what, what, why is this, why is this, why is this, why is he escalating the situation? My brother's just worried that like his carelessness is going to result in like me being injured because obviously my brother cares about like the well being of like my body and this guy just is just doing his job he, you know he doesn't care um and he goes and he said uh let's see i'm trying to remember exactly how this went because it's been a few years now but yeah it's like do you want to escalate this i'll have a supervisor here right now and my brother said this is bullshit <laughs> and he goes cursing's not gonna help you now <laughs> and my brother's like i am just here to make sure my brother isn't injured and then the guy, then the guy just kind of like, kind of looked around a little bit. And then, and then as he, as, and then he basically then just says, you're done. And then as we were leaving, he goes, next time make a TSA cares appointment. And my brother's like, we did. We thought you were the guy. <laughs> and he just kept pushing. <laughs> and we just pushed off into the distance. And I was like, you know, I don't know. Maybe the guy was having a really bad day. I don't know. But it was, uh. It was really uncomfortable because like what are we what are we what are we trying to do in this certain area like my brother's trying to make sure i don't get hurt this guy's obviously trying to do his job but he's also doing his job incredibly poorly as that was really like outside of some weird incidents at tsa that was the only like actual bad one i had a, a new recruit a new recruit guy um he was fine he, he was just trying to do his job like he just was new and he wanted me to crack open all of my feeding tube Just containers. Just call Marco online, she at X500. It is unbelievable how some people ignore the limitations of disabled people. Oh, dude, it's, it, it is, it is astounding. Especially when you get out in the world, like, like I haven't really been out all that much. I go to the hospital, I go to the bank, I go on some trails. But like when you start getting out, especially in cities, like it is, it is a disaster. <laughs> But, um, what, what was, oh yeah. So this guy, like he, there was a, a trainer with him and she was trying to be really hands off so she can understand like, you know, what, what, what he's doing, like, how is he doing, um, in his job and stuff like that. It, like I said, he was learning. Um, uh, but he's like, I need you to crack open all of these and then taste each one. And like, she's just like, and I'm like, well, that would contaminate those. And then they wouldn't be useful because they could only be open to the air for 24 hours. And I have, I'm going to be gone for five days. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and then he's like, but I need you to do it on this, just this one then. And it was like the, my heart medicine. And I'm just like, I don't mean to be 
I don't mean to be an ass here, but if I take that, it will throw off the balance of my medicine because that's a heart medicine that's like, like measured to a very like, you know, very precise number. Like it's liquid medicine, but it's it's very precise in how much is is in the syringe. And if I start just like taking more, that'll throw off like a balance that my heart is on. And I was, and I, was I they, and the guy, the the the, la the lady with them is just like, okay, yes. Um, let, let me step away. Let me take him away for a bit. And like, so what happened was I actually looked it up afterwards. It turns out he wasn't actually wrong what he was doing, because that is, that was a thing in the TSA used to actually do. They used to make people, um, especially like moms who had like, you know, milk for their babies and this and that they would have to go in. This was after nine 11. They had to go in and like taste the stuff. And apparently he was just reading off of like whatever like textbook they had or an old textbook or something. That's what I found out later because I was very confused by the whole thing. I was like, why is he want me to, why does he want me to taste all these containers and my medicine? And apparently like when the, the liquid ban was implemented, they had people for a while doing that. So that was actual, that was actually a procedure at one point. Um, it is not anymore. So he was more just like reading off of like some old procedure or whatever but that was such a weird encounter because it was like this tsa person's like grading this guy on his uh on his performance and then had to step in <laughs> had to step in it was just such a weird scenario it's such a weird scenario wait not this way not this way not this way this way it needs to go i need i need this to go under here i think it's such a weird one but like i said positive wise um there was a guy in seattle um his nickname was hollywood it's hollywood just the nicest guy in the world like he took us all the way to our gate like he, he had like we had a lot of luggage going to nashville for minecon live and and he, he wheeled us all the way to the once we got through the checkpoint he wheeled us all the way to the, the place all the way to our gate it was like the nicest guy ever such a good guy and then there was a there was a, a fan. There was a TSA guy that was a fan um, once. He was super nice. And then there was, uh, there was the funniest TSA guy I've ever experienced. This guy, this guy, it was my first time going through TSA in a wheelchair. So I was a little like nervous to make sure like everything went well, because I do have a lot of stuff that is red flags. And he looked at me and said, now I got to do my job, obviously. I got to do this, but... I know you to be not a threat. I have optically patted you down so I can do a, a lightened version of this. And I was like, optically patted down? What does that mean? <laughs> what in tarnation does that mean? Uh, optically patted down, what does that mean? So like the entire time when we were at Mind Fair in 2018 in LA, my brother was like, don't worry, he's been optically patted down. He is safe to enter the building. <laughs> he's been optically patted down. Uh, that was such a funny, that was so funny. So yeah, there, there was a bad experience, but on uh, but on the whole, like some of the people have actually been really, really nice and, and great. Even the optically patted down guy, like he was so funny. Oh my God, that guy was hilarious. Okay, this is not working, obviously. This is not working. My redstone skills have failed me again. I don't know what to do. What have I done? I've done I've done bad things. Um, in airline experiences, like in the plane, the only bad experience I've ever had in a plane was with a flight attendant. Um, just a really, really rude flight attendant. And I get like flight attendants go through a lot. Like we have a family member that is a flight attendant. So like I know all the struggles they have, but this person was just mean to be mean. Um, so what happened was like I was sitting in a seat that in her estimation, I shouldn't sit in because I have a disability. But the thing was, I couldn't transfer out of the seat without having people come back in. And she just told us to just deal with it. You need him moved before the door closes. And I was like, Pfft. um, and she just walked away. Luckily, the the people in front of us, um, uh, they had a caregiver with them, and she was a CNA. So she's like, "Don't worry, don't worry about whatever her problem is. I'll help you guys." 
and she just like she just like i don't know she's just had super strength and she just like whoop 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 and then i was in a seat and we were ready to hit the air and we were out of there um but it was just like that was the only bad experience on a plane i've had really um i've had pretty good experiences on the plane with flight attendants but that that person was just i don't know just super rude um but luckily there was a super nice cna and she knew how to move a person oh my god i was like ah! i'm like in the chair <laughs> like oh my god I've never had that incident before with like not be, like weirdly like being yelled at for sitting. I think I was sitting on an aisle seat and she said you can't be disabled and sit on an aisle seat because then people will be piling over you in the, in the event of an emergency. And I'm like, so they just leave me at the window and then they leave? Is it more convenient that they don't walk over me? They just leave me in the corner to be forgotten? I, I don't know. I, I don't know the rules. I don't make the rules around here. I'm just, I'm just, that was after TwitchCon in um, San Jose. Oh, in San Jose, that was a funny one. I remember the TSA people were like, dude, we got in the work here. You know, maybe on Thanksgiving when we get to work and we, we raise the security barrier, there, there's a little line of people, you know, when we open at whatever it was, like four in the morning or something like that. Like, we get here. The line is all the way out to ticketing. Everybody's wearing some shirts that are purple. Like there's purple backpacks. Like everybody's got purple. Who are these people? And I'm like, ah, they're Twitch people. <laughs> they were very confused. Like they had no idea what all these people were doing with red, with purple. It's like, why is everybody wearing purple? What is going on here? It's like, ah, don't ask. It's a Twitch thing. Mrs. Yeti, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. We talked about that just a little bit ago. Um, I am going to the Twitch of the cons. Um, very excited, very excited. Not a big Las Vegas guy, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've never really anticipated ever going to Vegas, but going to TwitchCon. I'm just, you know, no judgment, but I'm not really like a, I don't really drink or gamble or any of that stuff. You know, if, that, if that's what people enjoy, that's, that's fantastic. That's just not my thing. Um, so I never really had any uh, desire to go to Las Vegas, but you know, it'll be, ex I was really hoping that was going to work guys. I was really confident. I was really confident when I flew up here, I'm going to be like, guys, got some Ritstone stuff to show you. Twenty seven minutes until the, the server relaunches. Seriously, we got to get this done guys. We've got to get this done before Scar World opens. What am I doing wrong? I need help. This is really bad. What do I do? Remove one level of torches. Nailed it. All right. I'm removing one level of torches. Thank you. All right. And then I do think I do have to do this, this uh, repeater business. Repeater business. Wailing Wolves tipped twenty dollars. I can't give much as I'm preparing to lose my insurance soon, but I hope you obtain what you need, and I want to give you something to show how much all of us care for you. We will make it through this together. Wailing Wolves, I appreciate that, but please always, always take care of yourself. Please, please, always make sure you're good and taken care of. Um. But yeah, I, I appreciate that. But please, please make sure that you're you're taken care of and good. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about you. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It's I went through that last year, and it's not not fun, not fun at all. Okay, are we guys? You're you're geniuses. It worked. It worked. You guys are geniuses. You guys are geniuses. Hold on, let me sleep. Dude, you know what, Mrs. Yeti? This is, okay, this is my final Scar rant. And then we're talking about Ahsoka. This is my final Scar rant. It used to be. Let's go back years and years and years and years. It was always the insurance company that was the, the bad guy. I'm not saying they're not the bad guy anymore. They're, they're just as bad guys as they ever were. What has happened to hospitals and, like, you know, uh, hard good dealers, wheelchairs, oxygen concentrators. What happened to those people? Like hospitals used to be on your side all the time. 
And now they are, and I'm not joking, they are worse in some cases than insurance companies. What the heck happened? I mean, that was my experience when losing my insurance last year was it was entirely in the end. It was my hospital doing this and not the insurance company, which I don't give them a lot of love, the insurance company. But in this case, I couldn't blame them. It was the hospital. It's like, what happened to the hospitals? Like, seriously, they used to be on your side. They were on your side. They were on your side. Anyway, I'm done ranting. I'm done ranting. I'm done. I'm done. It works. It works. It works so good. Yes. Oh, that's good. Good. I don't mean the doctors and I don't mean the nurses and all of those, all the people, respiratory therapists, you know, all those people. I, I'm, I'm talking about the people who are upstairs, right? In the suits looking down on you. Those, those are the people I'm talking about. Oh, oh, oh look at this. Do you think our redstone uh, handyman would be proud of us right now? I know it's not perfect. I get it. Like, it's a little clunky. But, you know, you guys can help me with some some of the, the little bits of it. But at least it helps. Like, it, you know, it gets us, gets us in and out. Look at that. Look at that. That's really... I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I mean, yeah, it is a privatized issue. But it's still... It was before. It's just these people have gotten, like, enormously greedy. That's that's the issue in the last few years. In my opinion, it just feels like the world's collapsing and everyone's trying to get their bag before it collapses. That's how I feel with like everything and it and it's really frustrating and I hate it. <laughs> so I try to be, I don't know. You can it, sometimes you have to be the change that you want it to be, so you know, you just try to try to, you know, I don't know, live the best life, treat people well, etc. You got to do what you you can do in your own world. Random Disney history. In 1955, you could order chili with free Fritos for 35 cents or a Frito pie for 55 cents. In other words, today's equivalent of $2.30 for a little cheese. But you know, you know, if that was, and you know, you could say that was inflation with the 230. If that was, if Disney was selling that today, it would probably be eight instead of two. It probably would be, but hey, didn't they, didn't they invent Fritos at Disneyland? Or there was something from the Frito-Lay company that was invented at Disneyland. I forgot what it was. Here's an interesting fact that a lot of people don't know. This is a real fact that in the queue to the Jungle Cruise, when you were, when you were going along where the boats were and stuff, at one point. Oh, the Yippee Invasion. Um, that is another fun, fun Disney fact from the past. That at one point in the the water around the queue, there was actually real alligators for a very short amount of time at uh, Disneyland. And they were removed. Um, I think they were removed. They were removed pretty quickly after because they, they found out that was... It was like the reason why they didn't use real... Um, they didn't use real uh, animals in the Jungle Cruise in the first place because they wouldn't be um, show ready, right? You know, animals do what animals want to do. Um, they weren't always, you know, show ready and ready to go for the next boat. But so they thought, well, in the queue, we could get these these alligators and put them in there. But they were never like surface. They were always underwater. Um, and then if they ever did, people just assumed they were fake. And so they lasted an extremely short amount of time. But for a very, very brief window, Back in like the 50s or early 60s, there was actually alligators for a really short amount of time in the Jungle Cruise. And I guarantee if you if you ask cast members that, they probably wouldn't even know that fact because it is a old one and a very uh, obscure one. Let's see. Let's see. Doritos. That's right. Okay. That's what they invented. Oh, sweet, 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 sweet. Um, Ahsoka. So, yeah, I'll try not to spoil anything. I'm enjoying Ahsoka. I'm enjoying Ahsoka. I like the first uh, two episodes. The third episode, I, I need to rewatch it because I was like, it's not that I didn't like it. I just got like really bored, but I was also really tired. So I think I need to do another. You know how sometimes when you watch something, you're like, I think I need to not watch this right now because I am not in a position to stay awake. <laughs> 
<laughs> or be fully like cognizant of, of what's going on here. So I need to rewatch it. Um, but you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. The only thing that I would say that I'm a little iffy on, and this is a bit of a spoiler, so so buckle up, buckaroos. Um, I'm about 50 50 on spoiler on Sabine being a Jedi. I just feel like it's unnecessary. Sabine was a great character in lots of great arcs and, and story and backstories and all this good stuff. I feel like it's just unnecessary to do the whole like Jedi stuff right now. But I, I might be wrong and it might progress well through the rest of the series. Um, and I could be proven wrong, which I'd be very happy to be. Um, I'm just like, uh, I just feel like it's convoluted. And the only other complaint that I have is it's once again, just like every other Disney Plus show that's named after a character. It has nothing to do with that character. <laughs> like Ahsoka is just like a passenger in her show. The same as like Obi, the same as like Mando in the last season. It's fine. It's just what it's it's the story they chose to tell. But it just feels funny that the, the gravity of the story doesn't feel like it has anything to do with the name of the show. Very strange. But, you know. That's what they're doing. <laughs> That's what they're doing. I'm just happy to see my Rebels characters in live action. I think they all look they all look good. Um, you know, it's difficult to translate characters from animation to to live action. And that's, that's a difficult task. I, I think they did the best they could. It, it, it looks good. This looks not bad either. I'm telling you right now. This looks, looks look pretty good. Um, the backside looks terrible. So we need to adjust the back. Um, Please fix the hot bar cutoff. That's strange. Boop. Has that fixed it? Are we back? Uh, they did Ezra dirty. Oh, what did they do to Ezra? I mean, they haven't showed him yet, but... Um... They haven't showed him yet. I don't know what they did dirty. I don't know what they did. Dude, look at this, guys. Our exit's looking pretty good. Oh, by the way, where is purple guy again? Like, where's purple guy? Where's purple guy? Where is big purple man? Because he's he was the he was in Mando season three. Yeah, Zed. Where, where, Zed, Zed, Zed. What's his name again? I always forget. I, I can never remember that poor, that poor purple man's name. It's Zed. Okay. Um, where the heck is he? Like, why is he not hanging out? Is it because they didn't want to spend the money on the CG? Is that, is that, is that kind of our consensus on this one, purple guy? That's where, I, that's where I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna say. I, I, I feel like, I feel like that's the case. I feel like they were like, you know, we're going to show him for four seconds in Mando. So four seconds. Oh, I, now I know what I was going to get. We're going to show him for four seconds in Mando. And then people know that he's around. And then we don't have to spend the money on him for Ahsoka. Problem solved, everybody. Bob Iger can get a raise. Yeah, if he's not in the series, that would be a little bit of a disappointment. I mean, they made the asset. If they made the, the asset for um, for uh, Mando, I'd assume he's going to be in it at some point. I just feel like maybe his role's not going to be very deep, like just a more of like a cameo, unfortunately. That's how I kind of feel in it. That's how I feel it. What do you guys think? Do you think that's going to be the case? Didn't want uh, Papa Iger didn't want to spend the cash on him because that would be an expensive like asset. You know, like a lot of animation would have to go into that. So they just decided, you know what? I'm just going to do a little cameo. Thoughts on the Spider-Verse? I still haven't seen it yet, but I am excited for when I do see it because I enjoyed the first one a lot. I hope they build up a huge reveal. Maybe. I think the, the reveal, I guess, right now that's cooking is uh, for Thrawn and Ezra. Um, there's been... Um, so let's go back to Sabine real quick. One thing I did find very fascinating, which, what, uh, what our good boy um, Filoni's doing, is he's going back. So if he's saying... 
that anybody could be a Jedi. He, he's going back to like Lucas's original thoughts on the Force, if I'm not mistaken, because originally they would say that the Force lives within everyone. Some people are more in tune with connecting to the Force, hence like Jedi, etc. Um, and then they started, you know, playing around with the Metaclorians, you know. Um, and now it feels like if they're saying that Sabine, because are they saying that Sabine is force sensitive at all? Or is they saying that she has the force in us, like all of us. So they're trying to unlock it. I'm still a little bit confused. I, like I said, I probably need to rewatch that, that episode. <laughs> I was very sleepy. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Who do you think, uh, Maracas? There's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of speculation in the YouTubes. I see a lot of thumbnails of people trying to speculate on who that is. I mean, people have speculated that it is Ezra. I definitely not Ezra. Um, they've speculated that it was Star Killer, which I think is the next least possible, sadly. And then I would say. I think there was a fallen Jedi they assumed at one point it was. So yeah, there there is a there's a lot of theories. And I kind of lean towards based on prior Disney Star Wars shows that it'll be a nothing burger and just kind of an interesting character that actually has no substance. So that's kind of where I think that Murgot character is gonna go. But hey, hey, I, I could be wrong once again, and I'd be happy to be wrong. Yeah, you think it's a rando inquisitor? That's 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 how I see it. I've been burnt too much by random uh by random <laughs> by characters I get excited about and then Disney's like, nah, it's a nobody. You're dumb for thinking that, you. Why do you even why do you even think that? Why are you even a fan? That's like, oh, oh, it's very how they coming up with theories. Um so yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. I am I am uh, very much enjoying Ahsoka. I think uh one of the standouts in Ahsoka that I've really liked is uh, Wu Tang. Uh, not Wu, no, no. Um, what's the droid's name with the lightsabers? Um, Ho, 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 Ho Hang? Hang. It's not Grievous. No, I, I know it's not Grievous. How do I pronounce that name? I, how do I pronounce that? Ho Hang. Hu Hang? Hu Yang. Oh boy. I'm never going to figure out how to pronounce this on stream. It is a lost cause. Don't even try, guys. Don't even try. I'm going to refer to him as Lightsaber Robot. Um, I really like ro uh, Lightsaber Droid. Hu Yang. Hey, Hu Yang. Okay, is that it? Is that it? Did I did I do it right? Sweet. Um... I I really like that droid. He's a lot like KS 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 whatever his name was from um from uh Rogue One. I like that was one of my favorite droids and this one's also one of my favorites. Um I think they that's a really good droid. I've I've very much like like this droid. Scar, have you built a lightsaber yet? Well, I have my lightsaber from 2019 when I went to Disneyland. Um Darth Vader's lightsaber. Um KS Oh, KSO. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, no, I have my Darth Vader lightsaber, but I haven't built one at Disneyland. I haven't been back since 2019, so haven't even had a chance. But yeah, no, I, I've uh, I really like that droid. I think that droid's awesome. So that that's that that's been a standout for me. Um. Hmm. Also, can we say a, a nice thing about the show? Um, we're getting a lot of spaceships, a lot of starships, and I appreciate that very much, Dave. I appreciate that. Um, I feel like that's something that's been really like neglected in the last uh, while. Is like really good, like shots of like ships flying by and stuff. I, I'm a nerd for that. Like I love seeing it. I love seeing it. I was like, man, we're finally getting some uh, some star shots, you know. Uh, I, was, I was quite excited to see so many different shots of like, you know, Y wings and t uh, not Tie Fighters, but um, X wings and different stuff like that. I, I was, I was pretty, I was excited to see some of that stuff again. Um, felt like we've been uh, held out on them for so long. 
<laughs> I feel like we've been held out on for so long with good stuff like that. Hey, that's not bad, guys. That's not bad. So that is a decent template for our exit. I know it's not perfect, but I think that works pretty good. I feel like the space uh, fight in episode three was very George Lucas. Well, it was made by George Lucas's apprentice, which is Dave Filoni. So, um, so I think that that did come out pretty cool. But yeah, I, I just got to say, like, I, I trying to figure out where Dave's coming from with the Jedi stuff. Like, it's um, it does feel like he's trying to go back to like an older like explanation of the Force. I do like um, the the two like kind of bad guy Jedi Sithy friends. I do like them. Really, really sad that uh, the one guy passed away because he's he is great. I would love to have gotten to see more of Balin. Like, such a great character. Uh, such a tragedy that uh, what happened. So, yeah. Rest in peace to him, for sure. Uh, what do you think of Marvel movies? Oh, they're okay. I'm a very casual Marvel viewer. I'm a very casual Marvel viewer. I'm a sweater when it comes to Star Wars. There's sweat. I'm like pulling out scrolls. We're doing full scroll talk. You know, we're, we're, we're pulling out like the lore. I'm writing lore. You know, when it comes to Star Wars, it's a whole thing. But when it comes to, to Marvel, I'm just more of a casual. <laughs> I'm a casual. She needs a hug. She's very serious. If I were to wager how this series goes, this is a prediction. Balin turns and she's been too... She's had no experience with the Jedi. So she's kind of like the person that's always been told all the bad things. Maybe never gotten a really good, uh, you know, balanced look at things. And so she's like... She's been... My impression is that she has grown up to be an extremist. Whereas he's conflicted and he'll turn she won't and there'll be a battle between them that's that's how i see that that's how i see this going down because she she is so intense and you can see the conflict in balin right it's a shame to kill her there are so few jedi these days so you can see that there is conflict in him um and then her I, the you know either his his daughter his buddy who knows who she is we don't know a lot about her yet um you can see that there's no conflict. She is like, just, I will destroy you. <laughs> I will destroy you. So yeah, that's how I see that, that panning out. Pretty good, right? I've I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I did. It took four days to watch all the way through because I kept falling asleep. Um, it was good. It was good. It was, it was fine. Uh, nothing like super standouty, but I, I I enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm a casual Mar Marvel viewer. I am wildly excited for Loki. Uh, wish there was a new WandaVision, but apparently that that you know that's not going to happen. It's just a one-off series. Um, I am I am happy with that. I am very happy with that. Look at that, guys. We did it. We did it. It was sad. It was sad. I did like the walrus characters in those. They were very sad. I liked Rocket. Those were all good. The rest of the characters, like, I was just, I, I was expecting very different things, I think. I thought there would be some deaths. I thought some of the Guardians were going to die. Um, then they just basically just were like, all right, everybody, we, we've been together a long time, so we're gonna, all going to peace out. Uh, Marvel needs to re add some new characters. And they're like, okay, all right, I guess I'll just go this way. And I'll, I'll go this way. Goodbye, everybody. It's kind of how it, how it ended. <laughs> that is how it ended. Um, but there we go, guys. We did it. We did it. We created that. Very excited. Very excited. So with that, my friends, with that, I am off to celebrate the opening of Scar World's brand new season. So that is uh, my Patreon server that the mods have been working tirelessly getting all set up for the brand new season. Um, you can always learn more on my Patreon page to joining Scar World if that's something you would like to do. Um, and yeah, the, uh, just a, a shout out to the mods. They've had to deal with some, some really unfortunate and very difficult things this month. And, uh, they, they've done, um, some incredible work. So, um, please, please give them a ton of support in the discord and on the server, because none of this at all would be possible without them. 
and especially stepping up when um, we've had some really difficult things we've had to deal with this month, hence the the, the slight delay. And uh, from their perspective and my perspective, we really appreciate everybody being incredibly patient and understanding. Um, and that's not a common thing on the internet. So when people are, it's like, Look at how amazing they are. You just want to get a hug. Hugs all around. Hugs for everybody. Um, so yeah, a huge, 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 huge thank you to you for being patient and understanding. And huge, huge thank you to the mods for making this all happen. So big, big, big thanks all around. Um, so I want to see, I want to see appreciation in Discord and on the server. <laughs> I want to see it. Because <laughs> the mods. And always appreciation for me for everyone. So we're off. We're off. My throat is literally just about to fail on me. <laughs> It is it is momentarily going to fail on me. So guys, thank you so much for all the bits. Thank you so much for all the tips. The subscript the resubscriptions and the subscriptions. Mods couldn't do it without you. So yeah, thank you guys so 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 much. Uh remember if you're in Seattle and at PAX, I will be there on Monday doing a panel. And if you see me, wave. I've got I've got I've got my old cards. I got my old cards. I'm gonna hand out my old cards. It's like 2019 again. This is amazing. Um, so yeah, hope to see some of you guys there. And remember, I am going to TwitchCon. So if you were going there, I'll have more cards. <laughs> Maybe TCG cards by TwitchCon. Maybe. Maybe. Rez, thank you for the 40 months. Very much appreciate And with that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. I should raid somebody. I should spread the love and raid somebody. Who shall I raid is the question. Um, oh, a wild cub fan. Yay, let's go. There's cub. Okay, let's go uh, raid uh, cub. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Um, we'll probably have a video maybe a little later this week. I am planning on starting the volcano. So probably the biggest terraforming job of the season. I'm terrified. Goodbye. <laughs>